retest. If input voltage is within specification, measure the output voltage. Move the meter's red probe to the white lead of the adapter. The negative probe of the meter stays connected to the green lead. With the key on, the reading should be between 3.13 and 3.73 volts DC. If the output voltage with the engine off is within specification, you'll need to measure output voltage at idle. Keep the multimeter hooked up as before. Start the engine and let it idle. Output voltage should read between 2 and 3 volts DC. If it's not spec, replace the sensor and retest. If input and output voltage readings are correct, then check the output voltage under specified vacuum and pressure. You'll have to remove the connector bracket under the right side cover. Also, take out the battery and battery box and use jumper cables to power the motorcycle. The multimeter hookup remains the same as the other output voltage tests. Connect the vacuum pump to the sensor at the hose inlet. Apply the specified vacuum or negative pressure. Turn on the ignition, but do not start the engine. Measure the output voltage at a negative pressure of 34.5 centimeters of mercury. The reading should be between 1.6 and 2 volts DC. At a negative pressure of 5.9 centimeters of mercury, the reading should be between 2.9 and 3.5 volts DC. If the sensors are within spec, the sensor pickup jets must be checked for obstructions. The jets are located in the manifolds and surge tank. For the PB sensor, remove the cap from the pickup line, loosen the jet, and use a toothpick to lift it out. Clean the jet with carburetor cleaner and blow it clear with compressed air. For P2 and PIGN, remove the hose and the orifice. Again, clean the jet with carburetor cleaner and use compressed air to blow it clear. That's all there is to testing the pressure sensors. First, inspect the connectors and hoses for obvious problems. Then hook up the special adapter and multimeter and check the input voltage. Next, check the output voltage under three conditions. With the engine off and key on, at idle, and at a specified pressure or vacuum. Finally, inspect, remove, and clean the jets. Let's look now at speed sensor testing. Located on the back end of the camshaft, near the water pump, the speed sensor is similar in construction to the TPI pulse generators. Resistance measurements of both speed sensors are taken through this connector. Disconnect the speed sensor connector. It's the white four-prong connector located behind the right side cover on the connector bracket. Begin by setting the multimeter to the 20K scale and measure across the yellow and yellow with white tracer wires. If you don't get a reading, reset the dial to the 200 kilo ohm scale and try again, as we've done here. Then measure across the blue and blue with white tracer wires. The specification for each sensor coil is 100 to 250 ohms. Now measure the resistance of each coil to ground. The readings should be infinite. Notice that on this digital meter, infinity is represented by the digit 1 on the left of the readout. The display for a faulty speed sensor is 3, 0, and W lit. But the ECU display will not show until the engine is started. The motorcycle will run if only one of the speed sensors is faulty. But if both are bad, the engine won't start and the failure will not be displayed on the ECU. Once again, when testing for a faulty speed sensor, measure the resistance of each coil, check for continuity of each coil to ground, and check the computer display. Remember, if the bike won't start and there is no LED display, check the speed sensor. Okay? The throttle sensor is located on the end of the throttle shaft. It supplies to the ECU the information used to determine non-synchronous injection, basic fuel injection discharge volume, and which basic map to use. If you suspect a throttle sensor failure, check the computer display. If the computer confirms a throttle sensor failure, check for loose wires at the throttle sensor and make sure the sensor connector is securely plugged in. Now turn the key off and on to clear the ECU memory. If all connections are good, 
and the computer display is still on, you'll have to check the input and output voltage of the throttle sensor. Attach the special adapter to the throttle sensor connector coupler and hook the meter's red probe to the adapter's pink lead. The black meter probe goes to the green lead. Turn on the ignition and measure the input voltage. It should read between 4.75 and 5.25 volts DC. If the input voltage checks out to specification, you'll then have to check the output voltage. If input voltage is not within specification, check the harness for continuity to the ECU. Also check voltage input to the ECU at the number one and two terminals in the coupler. If the input voltage still doesn't meet specification, replace the ECU and retest. Before the output voltage is measured, the throttle sensor must be open to specification. To do this, first back off the idle adjustment screw until it clears the throttle lever. Be careful not to loosen or adjust the idle stop screw. Take the 2.9 millimeter feeler gauge from the turbo test kit and position it between the throttle lever and the idle stop screw. Don't rest the gauge on the protrusion of the throttle lever. It will affect the reading. Now, attach the red meter probe to the white adapter wire and the black probe to the green adapter wire. Turn on the ignition and measure output voltage on the 2 volt scale at the sensor coupler. The reading should be between 0.665 and 0.685 volts DC. If it's not, measure the resistance of the coil winding in the throttle sensor. Turn the ignition off and disconnect the coupler on the harness side. Using the 20K ohmmeter scale, measure the resistance. It should read 4 to 6 kiloohms. If the resistance reading is not within specification, replace the throttle sensor. If resistance is within specification but output voltage is not, you'll have to adjust the throttle sensor. To replace or adjust the throttle sensor, you'll drill out the brake head retaining bolts. Remove the cylinder head cover and place a shop cloth over the rockers and valves before drilling. Use a 9mm drill and drill out the bolt heads. Then remove the old bolts and install the new bolts finger tight. With the feeler gauge on the idle stop screw, rotate the throttle sensor clockwise or counterclockwise until the output voltage reading is within 0.665 to 0.685 volts DC. Once the reading is within specification, start the engine and rev it lightly. Recheck the voltage and readjust the sensor if necessary. Tighten the bolts until the heads snap off. Brake head bolts are required for emission control regulations. Let's recap throttle sensor testing. First, measure the input voltage. Then, measure the output voltage. After that, check the resistance of the throttle sensing coil. Finally, adjust or replace the sensor if necessary.